Welcome to Macroeconomic Modeling for Sustainable Development Planning, Modeling with System Dynamics. This course will be taught by Dr. Suleiman Diakiti. In this first module, we are going to carry out a VANSIM tutorial, and we are also going to create the first population model. We shall begin by looking at the basics of the VANSIM tutorial. The objective of this module is to give you an understanding of the practical tools of system dynamics. This module will also allow you to choose a practical system dynamics software, such as VANSIM, to install the VANSIM software, to get to grips with the software, and to create a first model with the software. By the end of this module, you will have a good knowledge of the use of practical tools for system dynamics. You will also have a mastery of the installation and use of the VANSIM software. You will also have a perfect mastery of creating a model with VANSIM. And you will also be able to do simulations for a simple model with VANSIM. So how do you install the VANSIM DSS? You first need to download VANSIM by following steps one to three. After this, you will install the VANSIM PLE version 9.0.1 by following steps one to five. Once you have installed VANSIM, you can open it by clicking on its icon on the desktop, or you can go to the Start menu and follow the commands below. A typical VANSIM 6.3 window looks like the following figure. We want to introduce the contents in the second top row. These include the sketch tools which are used for making sketches and graphs, and the analysis tools, because they are generally used for analysis purposes. We have the rate function. You can create a net flow or rate variable for the existing stock variables. Usually, it is either an inflow adding to the stock variable or an outflow subtracting from the stock variable. To create an inflow, 
Click the location of the screen you want the flow to start. Move the cursor to the inside of the stock variable and click again. For an outflow, click the inside of the stock variable first. Move the cursor to the place you want the flow to end and click again. After that, enter the name of the flow. We also have a model variable. This brings an existing variable created in a previous sketch to the screen with its causes. There is also the shadow variable, which is used to bring an existing variable created in the current or previous sketch to the screen without showing its causes. You can create multiple images of the same variable on a single sketch. We also have sketch comment, which is simply used to add a comment to the sketch. We have the analysis tools, which are usually in the left column of the screen. To select an analysis tool, you usually need to select a variable first by double clicking on the variable. We have the graph tool, which shows the time graph of the selected variable. Finally, we have the table tool, which shows the timetable in numeric values of the selected variable. We will now go ahead to create our first population model. To start the Ventsim application, you have to launch the Ventsim software. You go to Windows and click on the name or click on the shortcut on the desktop. Ventsim, you will see the Ventsim launch screen below. To create a model, you click on File and then New Model. A control box will appear asking for the time parameters for the model. To begin, we will only focus on five time parameters on the left side of the window. They are 1. Initial time, 2. Final time, 3. Time step, 4 save per and five units of time. We will fill 1990 for the initial time, 2015 for the final time, 0 0.125 for the time step and year for units of time. Click OK when you finish. Example of how you can specify a model. Now, you will see Vansim's workbench, which consists of menu toolbar on the top row, sketch toolbar on the second row on top, analysis toolbar on the left side, and a big window, which normally contains a sketch of the model, but is currently empty. 
you will first familiarize yourself with the diagramming sketch tools across the top of the window. If you place your cursor on the buttons but do not click, an explanation of the button will appear. Pay particular attention to the buttons for move and size, variable, arrow, sketch comment, and delete. And remember to be careful with the delete tool. Next step is to begin sketching the model and specifying relationships. If by any chance you are in the text edit tool, use view, then go to a sketch. You can add a new variable or a box variable to the sketch by following steps one to five. To change the name of an existing variable, click on the variable tool, then click that variable and modify or retype. To add an arrow from a first variable to a second one to the sketch, follow steps one to three. To move a variable, you can just drag it. To reshape a multi-word variable, Right-click the variable, choose clear box. A hidden box will shape the variable. You can reshape the variable by dragging the handle of the hidden box. You can also change a variable to a box variable, that's a stock, by right-clicking it, followed by clicking box and OK, or vice versa. You can reshape an arrow by dragging its handle as a small circle. You can delete an arrow by clicking the delete tool moving the cursor to the head of the arrow and clicking again. This is the same way you can delete a variable. To add comments such as a title or other contents, which is not part of the model, you can use the comment tool. You can follow steps one to six to add comments. You can give the sketch a name or rename it using view followed by rename. You can also view a sketch that is larger than the screen by using view and zoom. You can print a sketch using file and print or use the hand to select what you want, copy it to the clipboard and paste it into MS Word and print normally. When you finish, select file, save as. If saving for the first time or saving it under a different file name or file save if you want to save it to the same existing file. To create a flow and stock diagram, you have to create inventory variables, flow variables, and the settings. When creating an inventory flow diagram, we use stocks population, birth flow, flow of depth. When creating two variables, we will use the birth rate and life expectancy at birth. This is an illustration of an inventory flow diagram with two variables. The relationships are shown by the blue arrows. In the declaration of variable values, we activate equations. In the sketch, you defined causal relationships among variables. With equations, you can define their relationships quantitatively. You click the equation tool and all variables in the sketch which are not defined will be highlighted. When you click the variable which you want to be on the left side of the equation, the equation editor dialog box will appear. The variable windows in the dialog box can be used to reduce typing and to ensure consistency.
To declare variable values and activate equations, you can simply follow through steps 1 to 7 and you will be able to illustrate the causal relationships of interest. This is an illustration of the causal relationships of interest. Click on the equation of the active variables. We can fill it with initial values, for example, the population of Senegal in 1960. We can also fill it with values of birth given as population times birth rate. We can repeat these operations on other highlighted variables. This is where we are able to enter the information. Here we have a declaration of unity. And here we have an illustration of death as population over average lifetime and birth rate specified as 0 0.365. Here, we illustrate how to conduct unit verification. It is possible to have an error message. For instance, here we see that no units are specified for population. Once we note where the errors are, we can make corrections to our model and provide the right values. Once this is done, we can see that Vansim will give us a message telling us that the units are OK. To run the model, you have to do a model check. You use Control T to check for the correctness of the syntax in your model. Should Vensim provide a message like variable XX is not used in the model? This is not an error, but just an indication that such variable should be labeled as an indicator only, not part of a feedback loop. Do so by checking the supplementary box in the variables equation window. Check units, control U, and address any unit error you might have. Once the model is error-free to VentSim, you can then simulate it. Introduce a name for the simulation in the Simulation Results File Name window and press the Simulate button. You may need to run the simulation many times, each time with a different set of input data. By giving each run a unique name, you can keep track of them. The result of this simulation is stored in the dataset with a simulation name followed by the VDF extension. We now have a simulation model of the population. We can then have the population evolution graph from the simulation. You can view your simulation results in a graph. If you have multiple simulation runs stored, use the control panel tool in the top row. You can choose the runs you want. You then select variables in the sketch whose results you want to see by clicking on them. Click the graph tool in the left column to view the simulation results of the selected variable. Here is an example of a resulting graph for population. You can also simulate the values of the birth rate and life expectancy. You can also overwrite the existing base. When you try to do this, you will get a question from Vensim asking, dataset current already exists. Do you want to overwrite it? Your options are yes, no, or cancel. 
Here, we have different simulation results based on the model with values. We can continue carrying out different simulations. You can also click on Stop Setup to stop the simulation and to change values. You can continue to carry out the simulations, for instance, by changing the birth rate. This is the window that appears when you try to modify the birth rate. We can therefore have the evolution of the population with a new birth rate and have the graph for population as shown in this illustration. We see an illustration of the population runs. Finally, you can track down causes of a variable. When viewing simulation results, it is often very useful to quickly track down causes of a variable. Vensim offers powerful tools for this purpose. If you want to trace causes of a certain variable, first click it to make it the workbench variable, then choose the causes strip tool in the left column. If you want to trace further down one path, Double click the next variable and then click the causes strip tool. There are times when you will have warning messages in your model and you will need to learn how to deactivate them. The warning messages are indeed helpful when you are building your model. When you are demonstrating you finished your bug free model they should be turned off or suppressed. You use the select tools, options, settings, then in the warnings line, check to suppress. It is possible to open multiple models in Ventsim. You use the choose tools, then go to options and settings and make sure the box of close active model on Open New is unchecked. To switch between models, you press Control and Tab. In this module, you have learned the Vansim tutorial basics and we have also created a population model. You are encouraged to practice using the notes given in this lecture and other examples. Let us meet in the next and final module.